Ooh, can the autofocus keep up? Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's good, y'all? Kyle Loftus, super excited for today's episode. In this episode, we're gonna talk about Haze, what it is, why it matters, and how it can change the game for your cinematography. Let's do it. Haze. I use Haze on nearly every single one of my production sets. Now, why would I use Haze so often? Well, the great thing about Haze is it allows you to create much more cinematic images by taking what would be a boring or dull location and making it feel um, just alive and have its own sense of depth uh, and texture and volume to it. Um, so that's really what Haze does. You know, Haze takes essentially empty air and puts uh, texture into it. It adds particles into the air. We're creating texture, we're adding particles into the air and all of a sudden there's this sense of depth. This whole space now has volume within it. Um, so it really, again, just helps make your video cinematic in that sense. Additionally, what, what's really great about Haze is they make invisible light seeable. <laughs> Essentially, they create beams of light. Um, so oftentimes, I'm sure you've seen it all the time in Hollywood videos, you see these awesome cinematic right lays. I just said right lays. Wow. You see these rays of light coming in, and the reason um, cinematographers are able to achieve this look is because they're utilizing haze or fog. They're emitting this, these particles and texture into the air. So when your um, when your light leaves its source and it's coming to its end point, that uh, light that is then now in this air is catching and picking up on those particles, which is then creating these beams of light. So you're able to just have these really, really cool and profound uh, images um, by bringing out these rays of light, creating these beams of light, if you will. Again, I really love haze because it, it helps you spruce up uh, really boring, mundane, and dull scenes. It adds dimension, it adds dynamicism, um, and again, it's just really awesome element to add into your projects because it creates this texture and depth. Depth is so big in making your videos and your shots look cinematic. Being able to create that sense of depth is really, really gonna draw your viewers' eyes in and kind of keep them keened in and honed on uh, you know whatever shot they're looking at. Now let's go ahead and talk about the different types of haze because you know I'm talking about haze overall as this overarching theme, but there are different types. So there's haze, there's fog from fog machines, and there's like low-line fog. And then there's natural fog. So obviously natural fog, this is what is just available when the earth gives us with natural fog. What's great about natural fog is it's natural, it's real, and so it's nothing you have to worry about like faking or matching your scene. It is real, it is then and there. Um, additionally, what's great about natural fog is that it is very settled. An issue you constantly face with dealing with fog or haze, especially if you're using it outdoors, is it moves very fast. You know, there's no, um, it's not enclosed. So it, it's just escaping and it's rising and flowing everywhere. And so what's really great about natural fog is it tends to settle and sit um, a lot more often um, and stay in place a lot longer. And so that can be very beneficial when you're on a production set because obviously having to be rushed for time and rushing shots, you know, it just isn't ideal. Now, normal haze, so this is something you can get from a haze machine or often there's haze canisters. I personally like getting haze canisters for on-the-go jobs. They're great in that sense because you can take these um, you know, from state to state or something like that. Um, you don't have to carry this big old machine and all this different sets of fluid with you. It's just a lot more um, smaller and compact. You can fit it right in your backpack. Um, I'll put a link in my bio to uh, some of those you can get on Amazon. Then there's actually just haze machines. Haze machines emit a small mist um, that then uh, kind of rises and flows into the air. And again, this adds a sense of texture and depth because it's kind of shooting out these particles that then fill up the air and the space. Haze is different than fog. Haze, again, is kind of this thin mist um, that kind of flows and fills into the space. I really personally prefer um, using haze. I think it just, again, it feels more natural and realistic. Um, it's a lot faster and easier to deal with when dealing with fog. Fog is pretty clumpy. And so if you're ever using that without the intention of having a fog or 
smoke look, you're gonna have to spend a decent amount of time, you know, wafting and fanning that around so you can thin it out and like, so it has that haze effect. Foggers are much more affordable. So let's go ahead and uh, jump over to that. So what I typically do use is a fogger um, just because of what I'm dealing with with budgets and specific clients. However, if the budget's there and I have haze available, I'm definitely gonna go that route just because, you know, again, haze, I think it's just a lot easier. It has the look I want already. Um, and it's just it's cinematic, man. So let's just talk again about fog here real, real quick. So fog machines, fog machines are great because they kind of really can give you any of the looks you want. Again, if you're going for like this heavy, thick uh, fog look, um, like it's a eerie morning outside, or maybe you're going for a smoke look, you wanna make it appear like uh, something's on fire in the house. Well, you can achieve that. You know, you turn that bad boy on, bust it out, start pumping in that fog, just like I'm doing right now. Um, and so, you know, you can pump it in and it's nice and clumpy. So you'll see as the stuff's kind of filling up here, but it's very, very clumpy. And so if I'm trying to achieve that haze look, again, I'm gonna need something that I can waft it into the air so it kind of has more of a mist look because again, it's gonna come out thick and clumpy. So I would do something like this. See, and so now it's a lot more thinned out. It has more of that mist look. And so it kind of, it's, it's more of a settled look like haze. Ooh, that email notification, that is annoying. Now it can sit a lot more of like haze. So fog definitely does have its benefits. Again, it's a lot cheaper and more affordable. Um, you can find it at like a local party city. Um, Walmart often has it. You can get it on Amazon for very, very cheap. God, you can get it on Amazon for very cheap, which is awesome as well. So a lot of options with getting fog as compared to haze. Haze is a lot, um, not all, it's not very difficult to get, but you know, you need to plan ahead of time in order to kind of get that for your production, unless you're in a production hub, be it Miami, Las Vegas, New York, uh, Los Angeles, Atlanta, you know, those kind of big hubs like that. Then low line fog. Um, this is the same as a standard fog machine. The only difference is it's kind of formulated either through the machine or the fluid you particularly get um, to sit lower for longer. Now, this is often the kind of fog machines you see with people's houses for Halloween um, or that are often, uh, you know, kind of used at uh, theme parks like Halloween Horror Nights or something like that. Typically, I don't really ever mess with that unless I'm going for like that specific look. All right, y'all, that's it for this week's episode. Hope you learned a thing or two about haze. If you have any questions or comments, drop them below. If you enjoyed the video, give your boy a like. It's much appreciated, and I'll see y'all next week. Later.